I just want to make sure you can see everything okay. Yep, yep, that's good. All right, great, thank you. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Happy almost end of January. That means to me, we're heading towards springtime. Always in January or February, decluttering is one of our most popular workshops. And I hope that you choose to have some fun with it today with us because it does not have to be complicated. It does not have to be stressful. And that is the goal of me bringing this to you today. I kind of tried to, to chunk it down and make it really reasonable, affordable, inexpensive, and fun. Absolutely. Just wanted to share with you a little bit about me. I am actually a um, licensed real estate agent here in the States, serving clients in New Jersey and Pennsylvania for the last 12 years. This is my passion and hosting these workshops now on Zoom is the second of passion of mine to be of help to provide information and to share with you what is on the news and what is in social media and make it more manageable and you know more local pertaining to your community and some of the things that you can do. Our team mission is to help you become a homeowner uh, pretty much anywhere in the United States and Canada. And once you do that, we help you and support you in being sustainable and responsible homeowner in your own community. And also please consider us using as your virtual YOLO pages. We have an extensive concierge service. We can help you with a marketing plan, contractors, uh, senior services, staging, basically like Amazon does it from A to Z. This is exactly how um, I run our team and our business. So that's a little bit about me. And here we are. Today, we are talking all about declutter. And what I wanted to share with you when I did the uh, research for this workshop that actually a bunch of people have asked me to put together is what I realized that there's some really interesting statistics and I want to share that with you. So number one, tell me if you agree with me, 80% of what we own, we rarely use. Do you guys agree with that? I just want you to think about that for a second, right? So think about your clothes that you wear, the stuff that you use, think about the stuff that you have around the house, okay? Next, people typically spend 55 minutes a day looking for things, right? So if you convert that into a bigger perspective, that is two weeks out of the year that we spend looking for something. And two weeks is one or two amazing vacations. Wouldn't you agree on that? Right. So, and the last one, which, you know, I was reading another book yesterday and the statistics popped up again, decluttering can reduce household work by up to 40%. I think that was the highlight of my research. And I said, yes, I am game, show me how. I think a bunch of you guys will agree with me on that. So that's what we're talking about today is why decluttering is no longer just hip and fun, but it's actually important for you emotional as well as your physical well-being and health. We'll talk about room by room suggestions. We'll actually talk about what to keep, what to sell, throw, to donate. And you will walk away today with an action plan. And I promise you, if you take the time to go through this and just sit down and figure out what is it that you want to declutter in your life, I promise you that it is absolutely manageable as long as you do it a little bit at a time with the plan that I'll share with you. So why are we talking about decluttering in general, right? This is what I usually hear from my clients and tell me if that resonates with you, if it makes sense. We don't know where to start. It grows over time if it's left alone, right? We all have stuff and with time it becomes too much. And a perfect example of that is mail, right? We get mail delivered six days a week, rain or shine, right? Except for when we get a break when it's a holiday. Other than that, paper still comes in. Paper is the big detractor of dust. And also paper lately has been proven a creator of a lot of allergies, right? So if you have allergies to dust and maybe dust bunnies, and you're not sure why you're not feeling the greatest around at home, paper accumulation and dust that clings to it could be a big culprit, right? So with time, too much stuff, it's painful. And then we don't know where to start. We don't know what to keep, especially with paper for how long and why. And sometimes we just become overwhelmed 
and then we just don't do anything, all right? So what I want you to do is think about the things in our life and how they affect us on two ways, right? It's very simple. It's either on a subconscious level, which is the level that we don't think about. It's kind of like, you know, background operating system that we have in the back of our minds and a conscious level, right? So right now I am consciously sitting in front of you sharing with you this workshop, right? That's what I'm doing. Uh, subconsciously, what we do is when we get up in the morning and we you know, brush our teeth and then we go straight to the kitchen, we turn on our coffee pot. These are our habits that we develop over time and we do it on autopilot, right? But then let's say you put your coffee pot on and you go into the fridge and you want to get your creamer out to put in your coffee and you realize that you're out of creamer. You actually have to stop, you know, you actually almost like check yourself, stop what you're doing and say, wait a minute, I need to put this on my list of groceries to buy next time because I'm out of my coffee creamer. It actually throws you out of your comfort zone because it's not there where it always is and it's not part of your routine anymore. Okay, so what's important to understand is that clutter weighs us down on the subconscious level. What that means is it's constantly there, rubbing and rubbing, and it's wearing us down, okay? It's been proven with many statistics and research that clutter can be a source of stress, depression, health issues, right? If you are not able to sleep in your own bedroom, and that is your favorite room, Look around, take a look around and see if there's anything about that room bothers you, right? Maybe you have some piles of books. Maybe you have some clutter, right? The something that's been sitting there, you just don't realize the fact that it's there. And maybe that is what's bothering you, preventing you from getting a good night's rest, okay? Family problems. I see this in my real estate practice quite often where the wife says, yes, I'm ready to make the move. I want to downsize. I want to get closer to my kids. And I just want, I'm going to throw a bunch of things out. I want to donate stuff. And the husband is like, wait a minute, wait a minute. He's like putting the brake on. He's like, well, I don't want to throw a lot of stuff. I want to go through it. I want to do this. And then what I see and I can feel it is there's a tension between the two loved ones. Okay. And that tension can be between your loved ones, between kids and grandkids as well. If maybe family is helping out a loved one to downsize, to declutter, and then make that move eventually. And of course, a big one is also home disrepair. If you don't realize if your clutter covers up some issues, maybe if you have rodents or if you have termite problems, you know, where the, the bugs are eating the wood, which is, you know, your foundation and your support, you're going to have issues that will need to be repaired. And if it's not something that's caught early, it can create potential, you know, pretty significant financial investment that you will have to make. So, as clutter accumulates, the energy stagnates, right? Like it almost feels like swampy. So if you think about it, when you want to do that decluttering, just thinking about it just, just drains you of energy and you can even stop smiling, right? Like you can feel like, ugh, right? That's what we're talking about. It's an energy sucker. So the goal for today is what I want you to understand and think about is that what you're doing is for yourself, for your health, for your emotional well-being, and to also bring energy up right? We're going to release the stuff and the crap that we have. So that way we can make room for air that we want to breathe, or if there's any new passions and interests that you want to bring into your life. Okay. So thinking about the fact that you guys are here with me, something is bothering you and it's a little ding that you are ready for the change, right? So here's how we're going to do it. Okay. That is you in the Cape red cape that you know, means that you are excited and you get ready to, um, to get started. So here is your game plan, okay? Number one, the most important thing for you is have your calendar, take a look at your calendar and decide on your first appointment. And that is exactly how I want you to call it. It's going to be your first decluttering appointment with yourself, okay? The experts recommend starting out with an hour. If that is too overwhelming for you, if you want to spend just 30 minutes to 45 minutes, that's fine, right? But definitely give yourself enough time to accomplish something significant, okay? And once you get comfortable with your plan and your process, if you want to, blo to block out another hour, if you want to go longer, if you want to go shorter, that is your prerogative. But your first appointment, you just need to decide and you're going to keep it, right? Your first appointment with yourself for decluttering is going to be similar to you going to the doctor, 
right? You're not just going to decide half hour before you have to leave and say, eh, I just don't feel like it. I'm just not going to go. Right? You don't do that unless you do, you know, you're not feeling well and you can't make your doctor's appointment. Okay. Next, you're going to need a timer. Now, your cell phone is not a good timer because it's a, it's a huge source of distraction. So my recommendation to you is use a kitchen timer where it's just a dialer, or you can use your microwave or your oven, okay? And the timer is what's gonna keep you focused during your appointment, okay? So no phone, because you're gonna get notifications, you're gonna get text messages, and then you're gonna wanna check them, and then guess what? That is a rabbit hole, I don't want you to go, because that, that is all, that's dangerous. Next, you're going to want to change into comfortable clothing, because here's a secret, guys, when you declutter, you're going to work up some sweat. You're going to be carrying boxes. You're going to be moving around the house. You're going to be running up and down the stairs. And to me, that's a workout. You're going to be burning calories. So you have to be comfortable. So whatever that looks like, yoga pants, t-shirt, wear those, okay? Then before you start, you do need to get something to eat and make sure you have your glass of water. Because as you know, when you burn your calories, you're going to get thirsty. There's no excuses from going and taking a break you have your water with you and you have your snack with you. Next, put on some music, right? Light a candle, open a window, choose what appeals to you. I'll give you an example. Um, I started listening to a, it's called the Frank Sinatra radio on Spotify when I cleaned the kitchen, right? I don't like cleaning the kitchen. I like when it's clean, but I use that music. It calms me, it soothes me, right? And it's not as bad when I'm actually doing the cleaning. I, you know, I enjoy listening to the music and it actually helps me set the mood and just get excited before for me to finish what I'm doing, right? And that's part of the decluttering as well. Next, I am a big believer in notebooks, right? I have notebooks for everything. I like to write stuff down because it gives me that comfort knowing that I'm not going to forget something if I'm gonna write it down. My recommendation to you is have a notepad as well for your decluttering plan. Right? When you have some thoughts, if you have something that you want your family to have, if you want to give something to someone, write it down, right? So that's going to be your action plan. It's going to be your notes where you ended up. It's going to be your planning for next time, right? Whatever it is that you want to jot down, get it out of your head because we are guilty of keeping a lot of things on, my, on our mind and then we forget and then we get frustrated with ourselves. And it's again, that rabbit hole you don't want to go to. Okay, next, we're going to work on our tools, right? We need some tools to help us in this process. Trash can, recycle can, and some storage bins, right? You can use boxes, you can use colorful storage bins. You can, you can actually uh, label each one if you want. You can use post-it notes, you can use Sharpie on the tape, whatever it is that you have handy. Don't overcomplicate it, okay? Use what you already have. And we're going to have our, our boxes separated in a couple of different piles. One is gonna be putting it away, right? We're going to keep it. One is donating, undecided, throw away and sell. Now, the goal of your first session is not to put everything in the undecided box. No, that's not how this works. We are actually going to put a little bit in every box. So that way, after that one hour, you're going to have a great sense of satisfaction knowing that you have accomplished quite a bit and you have something in each tote. Trust me, that is what you need to do. A little bit in each tote, okay? The guidelines that you want to be mindful throughout your whole one hour is a couple of things. Number one, we're keeping the stuff that bring you joy, makes you smile, and then support your vision and plan for you going forward, okay? And then we're going to release the stuff and the crap of your past that you just want to shed that makes you feel sad, guilty, and unhappy, okay? And I know that when, the, I think the hardest thing to do is go through mementos and keepsakes, so we're going to talk a little bit about that down the road where I give you some good suggestions about that, okay? And when that timer goes up and it's dings, it is now time for you to stop, pat yourself on your back and say, good job, you persevered, and then take down the notes in your notebook. Where did you stop, right? So that way you can go back to it the next time. When do you want to get to it next time, right? Because you really need to have another appointment set. Okay, do you have any notes? How did you feel about going through this process? Just jot it down, okay? And two questions that people ask me all the time, where should I start? 
Okay, so if you're thinking about like overall decluttering a little bit in your whole house, my recommendation to you is start in your favorite room. If it's a kitchen or a bedroom, start in your favorite room because it's going to give you the most satisfaction that you got there first and you made, made progress. That's one. And two, when to do it, think about your first day off, right? If you get Friday, if you get Saturday and Sunday off, tackle it first thing on Saturday morning before you start running with your day, before you start doing errands. And then before you start getting tired, basically. So do that one hour and believe me, you're going to feel so awesome after that one hour. And then you can tackle the rest of your weekend. Okay. All right. Let's break it down. Let's move from room to room in our house and talk about the kitchen first. Okay. Here, what I have some suggestions for you that I used myself in my own kitchen and my other clients who have went through this process with me made suggestions to me. Okay, number one, please do not tackle the whole kitchen at once, okay? Um, I have done that, but that's because I can be really focused and I actually enjoy organization, right? It makes me really happy and it gives me a burst of energy. For a lot of people, it's not the same, okay? So let's just focus on two drawers on one cabinet at a time. And if you have time, then move on, okay? Just one messy drawer, looking tidy is going to give you a wonderful sense of satisfaction, okay? Don't forget to also declutter your fridge, all right? So here are some guidelines for you, throwing away food, allocating certain spaces in your, on your shelves. If you want, label them for your family members so they know where to put stuff back. And also, if you maintain and you keep your fridge organized, it's going to save you money when you are shopping, right? Because you're not going to have five bottles of ketchup because it's tucked in somewhere in all different parts of your refrigerator, okay? Use clear glass storage containers so that way you can see everything, okay? Uh, refer to a food storage guide. We're happy to mail it to you because remember, just because the product does not have an expiration date does not mean that it's going to last you forever, okay? It doesn't work like that. So make sure that you're keeping track. What I started doing is writing on the lid. Like if I opened a jar of sauce, I actually will write on there when I opened it. I do the same thing with my shredded cheese and everything else that I use on a regular basis. We just write in Sharpie on the, right on the bag. And that has been helpful that we implemented in my family. Next, let's talk about how much stuff you have, right? So I want you to just open up your cabinet where you have your plates and your... Uh, utensils and your coffee mugs and I want you to look at it and I want you to think about really like how much of it do you really use that's one and two I want you to actually take a look at your stuff and make sure that it's still in good shape right things that we use every day they wear out they crack they break and they chip so if you have some of your cups that are chipped that are cracked throw them away because god forbid that chip is going to end up in your coffee and then you're going to drink it right? So if you look inside your cup, you know, as we swirl the spoon, we actually scrape away the interior of your cup. If that looks really scraped, it's time for that mug to be retired and for you to potentially get a new one or pull a new one that's already been in your cabinet, okay? The same thing with your plates, the same thing with your uh, cooking utensils that are spatulas, right? Wooden and plastic items, they wear out. We cook with them. We melt them. They crack. They split. Take a look and see if there's anything that needs to be thrown away. Please, let's not eat those things, okay? Because they're not really eatable. And a couple of suggestions for you here that I have listed pictures on how to not only keep things organized once you actually get them that way, but also make sure that your items are protected, right? Like for example, the pantry pan and pot lid organizer, it's actually going to prevent your pans from scratching, which means that they're going to last you longer, right? The container lid organizer I think is genius because I hate opening up a cabinet drawer and all that stuff falling right in your face, right? I think we can all agree with that. And utilize your doors for storage as well. Right, you can find all of these items right on Amazon if you don't feel like going to the store, or you can also find them at like Bed Bath and Beyond, Home Depot, and Lowe's, and you know, other uh, home improvement stores. All right, we're heading into the bathrooms. Okay, a couple of things here to consider number one, start with all the stuff that you have in your bathroom. Okay, take a look at the products that you have and throw away the stuff you don't like 
that you don't use that looks pretty, but oh my God, is it so dusty? Okay. What I've decided when I was doing the research is every, anything that you haven't used in about six months to a year, you need to throw it away, right? The, the, remember, the stuff that is in our bathroom has chemicals in it to prevent it from going bad because it is not refrigerated, okay? And then what we do is we take those products and we put them on our body, right? Skin is the biggest organ that we have on our body. And what I want you to think about it is maybe a different perspective, okay? I, as a real estate agent, can help you downsize, buy something else, get a cabin, buy a condo, whatever it is, right? If you don't like where you live currently. However, you and I have just one body that we were born in and we cannot change it if we don't like it. This is it, right? This is our house. So we wanna make sure that we take care of the house that we live in, our physical body, the best in, with our ability. And that means putting less chemicals into it and making sure that the products that we use in our body are the freshest. Right, so I want you to change the way you are thinking a little bit uh, to make sure that we are taking care of us and we are mindful about our body. So throw away old medicines, okay? Throw away old lotions. Give yourself the permission to every six months to buy fresh makeup, right? So you can use the Christmas and the holiday time to, to buy something new. And then maybe right around July, that is your six month mark, buy something fresh as well. Okay. And I know it's kind of hard when you buy that eyeshadow for a holiday party and you only use it one time and you're like, well, I can't throw it away. I only used it once, right? But yes, you can, because it is something that goes on your body and you want to make sure that it's fresh. So don't worry about that. Throw stuff away and then update it every six months. Next, set up your morning and your night routines using plastic bins. Think about what is it that you use all the time and organize it in such a way that it's all in one place. All you have to do is pull out that one drawer or that one box and everything is there, okay? And next, of course, let's go through our makeup, right? Again, the same rule of thumb, you know, some of the times differ. I say, you know what, every six months, replace your mascara, your eyeshadow, your foundation, whatever it is that you use on a regular basis, please just get rid of the old ones and get yourself some fresh things. And of course, I have some suggestions for you. Again, use your drawers, use the same stackable bins and storage bins that you use in the kitchen, right? We're not looking for anything fancy, something that is sturdy and can be easily cleaned as well. All right, we're heading into the bedrooms, okay? Your bedroom is the peaceful place, right? As I mentioned to you earlier, if you have a bunch of crap and stuff in your bedroom, you're going to feel guilty. And when you feel gu guilty, that is an energy drainer on your subconscious, okay? So for brain to ignore that clutter, it is mental effort and energy, and you're going to feel that you're not gonna sleep well. So if that is something that you're concerned about, maybe you should start with your bedroom, right? So we're talking about your closets, right? I am a big fan of making sure that you use up all the space that you have. If you have older homes, or maybe you live in the apartment, you know that the, the storage space is very, very precious. So why not use everything, right? Look at the pictures of the befores and afters of someone I know who organized her closet and did the built-ins. I love it. Every corner is used, okay? She uses everything and then she puts boxes underneath the clothing to make sure that, you know, her shoes are stored there and everything has been utilized. Okay. You can use, again, clear bags. You can use clear storage bins as long as it's clear so that way you can see what you're storing. Or you can do the storage bins. And all these organizers are sold on Amazon as well as the home improvement stores that you can check them out if you want to go see it. Okay. All right. Ladies, let's talk about clothing. Okay. I know it's a uh, touchy subject. Clothing is tough. I hear it. So the rule of thumb for the experts online, they said six months. If you haven't worn something in six months, it's got to go. I'm going to, I said, you know what? That's even a little bit eh, too risky for me. So I said two years, right? So that is the permission for yourself to see if it's something that you're going to wear over two seasons, two winters, two summers. If you haven't done that in two years, you're probably not going to wear it again. Okay. If it's out of style, if it's stained and torn in bad shape, if you don't like it, you don't need it, if it's too small or large, donate it. Remember it? Because you are not throwing away, you're donating it, and someone else who's maybe looking for that some, some special piece is going to take your piece that you donated and make it their treasure. So that's how you want to think about it. Okay. And of course, organize your closet 
you know, if you want to organize it by colors, some people do it by the type of clothing. That also gives you a good visual perspective of what you have and maybe what you still need. Moving into living room and family rooms, okay? Here's a couple of suggestions for you. If you have books and magazines, you need to weed them out, okay? We don't vacuum them all the time and they are suckers for dust, okay? I can tell you that. If you can look behind me, I actually have my bookshelves because I love books and I go through them on a regular basis. They are behind glass doors, okay? So that is one way I decided that I was going to combat the dust issue in my own house. Now, you can donate books to the library. If you have textbooks, encyclopedias, old magazines, they're all to be recycled. The libraries are not going to want it, okay? Go through your electronics and cords, okay? Go through your pillows and blankets. If you have furry kids, they love to sit on pillows and blankets. Take a look and see if maybe those things need to be thrown away and you can give yourself permission to buy something fresh and new. Maybe that's colorful, okay? Next, go through your pictures. We are really big on taking photos with our phones, but when was the last time you actually went through those pictures, took them to CVS or pharmacy or another place where you can actually get pictures printed and updated your photos? I just want you to think about it, that photos bring us the most joy, right? We took pictures of our families, of something that we like, you know, sun or water or nature right? Why not print it where it's so inexpensive to get them printed and put them in the frame so that way every time you walk by, it's going to bring you joy and make you smile, okay? If you don't want to put them in the frames, maybe you want to hang them and make a collage for you all, absolutely. You can find these sets of frames right on Amazon. They're all different sizes, which makes it that much more fun. You can get them ordered, delivered to your house, and then play with them and create a collage. So that is a little bit of a homework for you. If your photos are outdated, let's look through some of the photos that you have taken recently. Go back six to 12 months if you want, and let's create a really fun collage so that way you can enjoy the things that you enjoy taking pictures of. Home office, okay? So some of the things, same things apply. Recycling old magazines and unneeded papers. I just want to reiterate to you guys that because the mail comes in on a regular basis, you have to be on top of mail all the time, okay? I am one of those rare people that loves getting mail, okay? I really, really do. Whether it's bills or not, I get super excited. I get to open my mailbox and there's stuff in there, okay? And then I actually enjoy going through it. The way I separate my mail, if that's helpful to you, is I do it in th three things. Number one, pile is the stuff that's important. It's a bill or something that I need to review. And it goes in my drawer in my, in my cabinet that is to the right of me. And then on Saturday morning, I look through, go through everything and I scan stuff or take care of it. And that's it. It gets done and it's, it's filed away, right? It's, so you really, the mail, that mail gets touched twice. Another one is something that needs to be shredded. I go, it goes on top of my shredder. And then the third pile is recycle, which is I look at it and say, okay, this is not something I need. It goes straight into the bag for recycles to go out to my on my recycle day, which is Thursday, right? That's it. That's how I take care of it. I don't wait. I don't get it piled up because you are not going to be able to catch with your mail if you don't do it on a regular basis, okay? So don't give yourself extra work to care of it and stay on top of it, okay? I file away important documents and I do it through Dropbox and Google Drive, right? If you have Gmail, you have access to it. You have a, a virtual filing cabinet that can fit thousands of papers. You can actually do it with your phone, right? You can actually put an app on your phone and do it with your phone. Or if you prefer, you can get a very inexpensive scanner and scan your documents in. That's what I have. And I found it helpful. So that way, you know, if I scan my receipts for my warranties, I keep track of all of those things. And if the actual receipt gets, you know, it's, it's, um, it can fade away, I still have a copy of it and I still have a PDF of it in my virtual filing cabinet, okay? Unroll Me is a great service if you want to unsubscribe from emails and retailers. I stay on top of those things because a lot of it goes to my work email and I do not want my work email box bombarded so that way I don't miss important critical emails from my clients, okay? Junk out mail, opt out pre-screen, okay? So there's some ideas for you to kind of start getting ahead of your paperwork. 
All right, garage and basement. Guys, if you have a garage and basement, which I actually don't have either, you are so, so fortunate, okay? So let's make sure that we use not just the floor of that space, but also walls and ceiling, right? They make these really heavy duty shelves that you can put up and store in totes. My recommendation to you is just use clear totes so you can see what's in them. And you can put stuff there that you only use you know, once a year. Maybe it's your fishing gear or camping gear or holiday decorations, right? It's off the floor, it's stored and it's safe, okay? And the same thing, designate and make sure that you have zones for different things in your areas. And pretty much garage and basement are the same. Having clear totes in your basement is even more critical to make sure that nothing gets damaged just in case your sump pump doesn't run or maybe you get water in your basement. All right, let's talk about paper and what you should keep and what you should shred. I get this question all the time. So I created an actual kind of cheat sheet for you that I encourage you to print it. If you can't print it, please let us know. I'm more than happy to put it in the mail to you because it's very important, okay? We wanna make sure that I, 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 our identity is protected, right? So we're going to shred anything that is, you know, gives you anxiety, anything that has any kind of medical information, credit card offers, all of that needs to be shredded. You, you don't need to make it complicated. This is my shredder that I have. I bought it on Amazon. I bought a bag of um, bags that I, you know, I put stuff in because the stuff that is shredded cannot be recycled because of the ink. Okay, so you actually throw it away. So don't make it complicated. Make it easy for you just to throw stuff in and shred it maybe once a week. Or if you don't have a lot of mail, maybe do it once a month, but make sure that you stay on top of it. Okay, here is the handy guide for you for how long to keep certain things, okay? I'm going to let you peruse this in more detail later in terms of the first uh, six or so categories. What I want to talk about and my focus really for this, page, for this page is the last category called keep forever. I can't stress it enough for you guys to take the time, that's your second part of your homework from this workshop, is to gather all of your important documents that are, difficult to replace that are very, very important, okay? And the list is here for you. Papers, wills, powers of attorneys, birth and death certificates, college uh, transcripts, your you know, retirement documents, your mortgage documents, right? Things that are legal, that are important to keep, you need to make sure they're all in one place. And if you're going to keep them in your home, they need to be in the safe. Right? Because God forbid if something happens to your home, your apartment, and you're going to have issues, it's going to be extremely difficult to replace those documents. You're not going to remember what's in there. And some of those documents, frankly, cannot be replaced. So I don't want you to be in that position. Okay. So definitely study this. Take a look at this. If you don't want to have a, a, a safe in your home, you can actually rent a safety deposit box in the bank. So Ultimately, it's up to you how you want to handle it, but I can't stress this enough. This is extremely important. All right, let's talk about with the stuff that we're trying to get out of the house, how we're going to do that a couple of different ways, right? How do you throw away stuff? Number one, use your regular trash and recycle days that are available, right? If you're in the apartment, you have the trash containers on a regular basis. So take the time once or twice a week to get stuff out. Okay, even little by little is better than nothing, okay? If your township has a bulk day, take advantage of that, right? 1-800-GOT-JUNK uh, and some of the other trucks that are around, I can tell you that uh, try to use them as a last resort because they're very expensive. They're great as a last resort because they can show up at your house and they're there and available until like 11 o'clock at night, but they are expensive, okay? Depending on where you live, you may have electronic recycling and hazard trash days, Right? These are the products that we cannot just put into trash or recycle. They have to be uh, done a certain way, okay? And then furniture and then Baxter are another options for you to throw stuff away as, as an option. Maybe you know, you're working on like a bathroom renovation product and you're going to have more than just a little bit of trash that you want to get rid of all at once. Donations. Here's a great list for you, depending if you just don't, if you don't want to just take it to Salvation Army, to Purple Heart or Habitat, you, you want to have it like more specific, depending maybe what's on some of the things that you have to donate. This is a great list for you, depending on what you have, 
some of these are the, some of the companies that actually specialize on certain things. Like for example, if you have some suits, right, from your corporate days that you may want to donate, there are our organizations out there who help women get back into the workplace and make sure that they're presentable for the interviews so they can go out and feel comfortable um, going to a job interview. All right, what about these things? Here we go. Emotional things, things that make us upset that we don't want to touch, that makes us guilty, we don't want to throw them away. Okay, so here are some suggestions for you. And actually, I'm reading an excellent book right now that if you want to talk about being happier at home, I am not quite through it yet, but it's by my one of my favorite authors. Her name is Gretchen Rubin. Our last name is R-U-B-I-N. And the book is called Happier at Home. And she talks in her first chapter where she tackles the idea of possessions, she actually talks about how to differentiate between the things that truly matter to us, right, to you as an individual versus the things that we inherited because they were part of our family, right? And how do we decide what are we going to keep without feeling guilty if we want to get rid of those things? So I encourage you to to read that, that book if you are into reading and kind of analyzing and seeing how other people tackle the same kinds of challenges and concerns. So here are some suggestions from the research that I have done, right? A lot of the times it's hard for us to throw away, you know, our kids' artwork, uh, greeting cards that we get on a regular basis. My suggestion is take a couple of things that are most meaningful to you, right? The, 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 the things that, that were given to you and then keep those and you can actually make like a frame or collage out of them so that way you can truly enjoy it on a regular basis, right? Just like I suggested to you for that family and living room space. And the rest of them take pictures so you have an album and then you can just recycle them, okay? Uh, the same thing with actual like tchotchkes and items. Take a look and see which items are truly the most important to you and then you can take pictures of the others and then donate the rest so that way someone else can find pleasure in those items. Photos and albums are huge. A lot of people have these memories and, and I think you know, if something were to happen to them, they will be the most difficult to replace because those are memories. I recommend that you, you get uh, proactive rather than reactive and get them all digitized, right? You can do it in the library. If you get your own scanner, you can do it yourself. And if you're not tech, you're handy, Costco has it. And there's a lot of companies online that I listed here for you that will do it for you, right? You can actually send them the pictures and then they send them back along with a digitized disc or a little thumb drive or something that is similar to that in terms of technology, okay? DVDs and CDs you can donate to the library. VHSs, unfortunately, nobody wants anymore. So my recommendation is just recycle them. All right, selling and who can help you, right? A couple of suggestions for you. eBay and Etsy are go-tos, okay? You can also uh, try and sell and donate clothes through ThreadUp. Uh, social media, we have trusty Craigslist. Facebook sale groups are really, really great, okay? If you like to use apps, here's some suggestions for you. Uh, Poshmark is for more of a trendier designer items if you have. And of course, you can always have a garage sale, right? Or you can actually hire someone else to handle it for you, okay? And one thing is, just remember, if you are overwhelmed, and this is a lot for you, maybe you are older, it is okay to ask for help, right? You can ask help from family or friends. And if you, if you don't have anyone close by, don't hesitate to have, find a professional organizer or someone that is relatively expensive but can help you guide you and make this experience as most efficient as possible. All right, so your action plan, okay, this is what we're uh, taking away out of everything that I shared with you today. Number one, use your notebook and jot down your thoughts, okay? These are some of the questions that I usually ask my clients that I wanted to pass on to you, right? Why do you want to declutter in the first place? What is it bothering you? Is there a particular room? Is there a particular space? What is it that you want to declutter? Maybe it's not in your house. Maybe it's your car, right? Maybe it's just paperwork. So whatever it is, do you need someone's help to help you with this? Okay, maybe an organizer, family, friend, okay? If you have a deadline, maybe you are downsizing because you need to sell your home or you're moving somewhere else. Is there a deadline that you need to be, to be uh, worried about 
or just to keep kind of like a mindful check on, okay? Painter's blue tape is great for marking totes, for marking furniture and things that you want to get rid of or keep, right? Because it's peelable and you can use the Sharpie to write on it, okay? And then the most important thing, again, is your, that first appointment that I mentioned to you right in the beginning. Decide when you want to get started, right? So today is the middle of the week. So why don't we take this and say, okay, how about Saturday morning might be your next appointment, right? So decide on when you're going to do this and for how long, because really the most important thing that you can do and take away is start and have that first 30 to 45 minutes to an hour appointment with yourself to help yourself get started on your project, okay? And feel free to use this room by room guide to help you and guide you through your process, right? I'm not telling you to tackle the whole house, but tackle your favorite room. Right. If you want to do that, or it's your car, it's your office, it's your desk, whatever it is, focus on that. And that's what I got for you today. All right. Uh, this workbook is going to be shared with you. So I'm going to stop sharing right now. And I hope that we have a really lively group today and you guys have questions. I'm happy to see Don and Barb on call. How are you guys doing? Good. Coming out of it, coming yeah. out of it. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, one thing you missed when you were talking about getting ready, you mm -hmm. said have your lunch or breakfast and have water handy. Go to the bathroom. Oh, that is a good one. Yes, that is so true. I'll add it to my prep list. <laughs> <laughs> bathroom break. Yep. Thank you. All right, everyone, what questions do you have? And if you have any feedback or maybe if you have done some decluttering, what has helped you? All right, so the name of the book, uh, the author is Gretchen Rubin, R-U-B-I-N. And uh, the second book that I, I'm going through right now, it's called Happier Home. So that's the name of that book. I think based on that book, I might even actually do another workshop on how to make and be happier in your home because I am learning so much from her own experience and how she's going through about it. You know, talks about uh, personal possessions. It talks about relationship with her kids and the husband, creating happy places in your home based on those possessions. So I am, I'm about a third of the way in, so I'll let you know if I did decide to do something like a summary because I'm really enjoying her experience and I want to do it myself too. And so. that's written by Gretchen Rubin? Yes, that is, that is her name. The first book that she wrote is called Happiness Project, which was by the best book I read last year. So I actually gifted it to a couple of people because I enjoyed it so much. So that is something that if you, know, if you like to read, I'm a bookie, I'm always reading you may want to consider as well. I really loved her style and the lessons that I learned from, from that book as well. One thing that's helped me, um, I always have these pieces of paper and notes what I'm gonna do. I got one of those whiteboards where you write and erase it. And every night before I go to bed, I write down what I have to do the next day, whether it's write a thank you note or put something on a shopping list. But it's eliminated a lot of the little pieces of paper that are all over. Absolutely. Hi, Anne. It's a great idea. Hi. <laughs> you know what I also started doing is I actually have notepads around different rooms in my house, especially in the bedroom, because I'm a thinker, I'm a problem solver. So sometimes before I go to bed, I have to write stuff down so it's out of my head so I can go to sleep. And then I will tear that page out when I go downstairs the, the next morning and that is my part of my to-dos for the week, right? So it kind of helps me also settle my mind because sometimes if it's still in my head, it's still in my mind, I won't be able to go to sleep. And I have a notepad in the car. I have a notepad hanging on the fridge in my kitchen for lists and different things. So, you know, as part of trying to make your own life easier, think about what is it that is going to make it easier for you, right? In your own life. If you like making lists, or if you don't like, don't like making lists, but it's going to 
help you make your life easier because we're always running around and we're trying to accomplish everything at once, then do that. So it helps me. I really miss the uh, free shredding days this oh, year. Yeah. yeah. Big, uh, it's a real problem not having those days. Absolutely. I agree with you. I'm hoping that they're going to bring them back in the springtime because they're going to realize that we really need them. So my suggestion is to check back with the county and see, you know, if there's anything that's being planned. So Shady I have a feeling they're going to bring it back. Shady Brook does it the third Thursday of the month. Not free though. No, I think it's 10, bucks. 10 for the first box and no, 15 for the first and 10 for the rest. Okay. You can also shred stuff at the UPS store. I think it goes by weight as well. And I think Staples does it in Office uh, Depot. So check with them too if you need to shred stuff. Or if you want, if you want to spend, I think the, my shredder was 35 bucks, which is the one that I recommended, you can do it at home. You know, if you wanted to, uh, you don't you didn't want to go out. And Tara has a recommendation for getting rid of sentimental items. She has a few of the trophies and plaques that she didn't want to get rid of. So she decided that she was going to take a photo of them, like really good photo, and then put them in the bin out of sight. And she found that if she didn't touch them or even think about them after that, it makes it easier, you know, for you, for her to be on board with tossing them. So, and then you have pictures of them if you ever want to look at them. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Those, those trophies and plaques, those are other ways of collecting dust, like there's no tomorrow. So that's for sure. Anybody else, else, anyone else has any other tips and tricks that they really like? They worked for them? Well, I hope that you found this helpful. We do a decluttering workshop every month because every month somebody has something and some of, people, some of our peeps come back every month to kind of get a little bit of a energy boost and, <laughs> and uh, just to hear it again. I'm planning on probably adding because I'm always trying to find new things. As I make my way through the book, that I mentioned to you happier at home, I'm probably gonna add some of these things to this decluttering workshop and a couple of other ones that I do. So I invite you to check out our schedule, which is going to be in the workbook. In the last page, we have a running schedule of different workshops that we do on Zoom that are absolutely free and you're welcome to jump in anytime. You always get a copy of the recording as well as the workbook. And hopefully you can learn something, right? It's even if it's a small tip on something, if it benefits you, then I have done my job. So all right. I appreciate your workshops. I find them very enjoyable. And one okay. of these things, it's going to stick. Thank you, Anne. You know, it forces me to do what I teach. So <laughs> <laughs> last year when we were in the lockdown for COVID, I did a 30-day a declutter challenge on my Facebook in April, right? And we had to do a little bit every day. Like one day was, you know, um, clean your junk drawer in the kitchen, right? So I actually had to clean my junk drawer and do the before and after photo. So it was a great accountability tool. And everybody was laughing at me because by the end of the month, they're like, well, you just redid the whole house. And I'm like, yeah, it was actually pretty good. So maybe we'll do something again in the springtime. We'll do maybe not quite every day, but something, you know, you, you do something, you know, every week. Maybe we'll do some kind of a declutter challenge. So if you want to guys find me on Facebook, that's where I'm at. That is my social media of choice besides YouTube. So, all right, everybody, if we don't have your contact information to get your copies of the workbook, please uh, make sure you're, you know, if you want to post uh, in the chat box, your information, or we can reach out to you as well. So that way we have your correct information. And please share with us on your accomplishments and, you know, some of your tips and tricks. And hopefully I'll see you again soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys you have much. a great rest of the day and <clears throat> great to see some of you as well. You, your faces you. are sounding better.
Much better. All right. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.